Thank you, Madam President. This is a joint statement. The Council failed to set up a commission of inquiry with a specific focus on the United States of America last week. This impedes genuine injustice and accountability at the international level for systemic racism and police violence in the U.S., in the West, and elsewhere. We appreciate those governments from Africa and elsewhere who sought to support those fighting racism on the front lines and who shed light on the U.S. and Western governments fail for failing to protect black people from systematic racism and police violence. The urgent debate manifested the struggles taking place today, bringing the sense of urgency from the streets of Minneapolis into the Palais of Nations in Geneva. It connected directly with the social movements and global outrage that black and minority communities are experiencing. We mark the extraordinary fact that the voices of victims' families resonated and were a central part of the debate with Thurinese Floyd's moving statement at the debate's very outset. We welcome the strong original resolution presented by the African group. Some states took a critical step towards elevating the voices of those most affected by human rights violations. This must become the norm, not the exception. This failure to advance an international investigation is not theirs. It is a reflection of the selectivity and the double standards displayed by many states, particularly Western states, in failing to apply the objective criteria to which they have committed in relation to one of their own. In doing so, they are complicit in maintaining and perpetuating entrenched systems of racism and white supremacy. Shifting the resolution from being specific to the U.S. to being generic has served to subvert the debate into an all lives matter discussion, which has rendered invisible those who needed to be at the very center of the Council's attention. The situation in the United States fulfills many of the objective criteria that many states in this room have pledged to apply. The High Commissioner, Special Procedures, Treaty Bodies have all raised alarm and even issued early warning signals. Nevertheless, we consider that the report of the High Commissioner could provide a useful opportunity for continued advocacy. We call on all states, including the U.S., to ensure the office has the resources it needs for this mandate and to engage in good faith with this process and report with genuine self-reflection and commitment towards meaningful change. This urgent debate has only re-energized us to work tirelessly at all levels until the Council meaningfully addresses the historic systemic racism and oppression faced by people of African descent in the U.S. and the rest of the world. Thank you, Madam President.